So that is a short, sloppy, but very intense and fun trios match. And uh, nothing was like outright boshed. A lot of things were clunky. Well, tell everybody what the match was, Vinny. I thought we did. No. Demolition versus Legion of Doom and Ultimate Warrior. Yes, yes. All right. So, uh, Heat and Warrior, because say what you will, he sold better than either Road Warrior. And uh, Hot tagged a Hawk, and then everyone gets in there. There's a, there's a breaks into a six way, and Warrior pin smash the tackle and splash. And the whole thing only went like five minutes, but Demolition knew how to be a heel team. And obviously, the Road Warriors did. And Ultimate Warrior, all they do is sell and then get the win at the end. And uh, like I say, it was short and sloppy, but it, it was ugly in a good kind of way. Because I don't want the Ultimate Warrior and the Road Warriors and Demolition to come out here and wrestle like AJ Styles or Kenny Omega. I want them to be just barely in control as they clobber each other's senses for five minutes and somebody wins. You know, I'm sure I mentioned this the last time, but as a child, I was very skewed by the way that WWE pushed their superheroes, their Ultimate Warriors and their Hulk Hogan's and their... You know, Rick Rudes, these these giant jacked up dudes. And so as a kid, and I'd watch Axe, I'd be like, what is this fat school teacher doing with his face paint on? He looked like a school teacher. And I actually think he was a school teacher. Many but anyway, were, yeah. uh, you look at him now, and my God, what a powerhouse. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they, they had him in the ring here with Warrior and Hawk and Animal, who were just like totally jacked. And he was just a big, thick dude. Kind of like a Nikolai, actually. Nikolai Volkov. And so uh, he was very good in this match. You know, Smash was only good as Smash in his entire career. And uh, Crush was kind of actually only good as Crush. Demolition Crush his entire career. So uh, it was a fine little match. It's ironic they gave Demolition Crush because Axe and Smash were getting older. And they needed somebody to be the workhorse. And they gave him Crush. Yeah, they kept being the workhorse. <laughs> Demolition should have watched uh, some tapes of the Warrior before the show because you got to figure out that anytime you go after this guy with the axe handle, he's going to boot you in the stomach and give you a body slam. It's like, should have figured that out by now. Anyway, Dave gave this match two and one quarter stars. That's about right. That's fine. Yeah. But it's in a, a fun way. It's a two and a quarter star match if I ever saw one. Yeah. I, I like that uh, Ultimate Warrior actually started the match, tagged in Animal. Animal did one move and uh, got the tag back to Warrior, who did all the selling throughout the whole heat, yep. and then actually made the hot tag in the comeback and won. It really was the Ultimate Warrior by himself. Yeah. Against all three guys. Yeah. Back at Oktoberfest, they are playing Granny's favorite song, Roll Out the Barrel. The Doctor of Style slick vibing along with this. And uh, we're supposed to go to Lord Alfred Hayes for reports, but uh, he's too busy drinking and arguing about German beer, how it's inferior to English beer. And I, I do love me some English beer. He's got, his, his uh, he's got his e inner ear, like, on his uh, hat. It's not in his ear. Yes. This is very important later. He couldn't yes. hear. Yeah. Correct. Yes. The Macho King Randy Savage versus Dusty Rhodes. Gives his son Dustin a big old hug. And they do this match, and it, it, it's awesome because Dusty is selling his ass off, but I don't think he took one bump. Yeah, when you say selling, it's like he did a lot of sitting on his knees <laughs> mm -hmm. while, uh, you know, or laying on his back. Sleeping maybe a better way to work Yeah, here. he did not expend a whole lot of energy here in this Very match. little. He would get choked by Sherry and then just slump to his knees. He would take an axe handle off the top rope and kind of lean over onto his butt and fall down. But no, bumping, not necessary. You know, I was watching this show, and one thing I couldn't help but notice is that, you know, back then, these guys really did work a very, very full schedule. And they were on the road many, many, many days. And nobody wanted to get hurt. And so it is amazing watching everybody do everything they could to not get hurt. And, you know... Like, fuck. I, I really got thinking about this during the Honky Tonk Man match. I mean, Honky Tonk Man, God bless this guy. I'm not even sure he took any bumps. Mm -hmm. and I'd be stunned. Th there's a spot at the end where... Uh, who hits the ring with the chair at the end to make the save? Uh, Tugboat. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself yeah, here. But that's a guitar. Th but there's yeah. a point. Yeah, he, he hits the ring with a guitar to make the save or whatever. And uh, he starts hitting dudes. 
and fucking Honky takes a phantom guitar shot. Tugboat is nowhere near him. And he goes, oh, and he bumps through the ropes to the outside. Doesn't bump. He just kind of goes through the ropes and lands on his feet. And I was like, and then like Jimmy Hart is on the apron and he gets hit and he does the, the, the gimmick bump where he jumps high in the air, but he puts his armpit on the top rope and then he puts his leg on the top rope. So he actually doesn't take a bump at all. And then he just kind of slowly gets down to the apron and then he rolls off the apron to the floor and it fucking looks great because he gets hit and he flies up into the air, but it's the safest bump on the face of the planet. And just like everybody on the show was trying to figure out how can we make the offense and the selling look as good as humanly possible by actually doing as little as humanly possible? Yes. And I bring this up because you're going to watch Dynamite tonight, and there's oh, going to yeah. be dudes up and down the show just fucking killing each other, landing on their necks and taking all these crazy-ass bumps. And, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, what you want to do is what Jimmy Hart did. You don't want to... You don't want people to look at it and go, oh, my God, the guy's not even trying. You want the illusion that you're taking some crazy bump, but you're actually not. And there was a lot of that on this show. And Dusty, you know, his selling, I mean, he took no bumps. You know, he sold standing up, and then he laid on the mat, and then he got stomped. And then, you know, they start doing the stuff outside with DiBiase and... and uh, Dustin, and the whole time, Macho Man is is behind. And he's got the 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 chin lock where you go like this. You just put your hands together in front of the guy's face, and yeah. Dusty's just on his knees, kind of doing this a little bit. I mean, his heart rate's probably like forty eight beats a minute during this spot. It was like, man, you know, it's not like it was a great match or anything, but there was a lot of. Uh, but it was not horrible. No, the, 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 they got they got a lot out of nothing. There you go. Yes, we saw we saw Dusty Rhodes uh, wrestle Jerry Lawler in Lakewood, Washington. Yes, we did. In like 2005, and I'm pretty sure he took the same amount of bumps then. Yes. So he hasn't taken a bump since the early 90s. Is no. what I'm getting at. <laughs> if then. So according to Dave uh, DiBiase, when he gave out the $100 bill for the front row, that was a shoot. Yeah, yeah. it looked like it actually. I'm uh, sure there was shoot money, but all I can think was, I and $100 is a lot more in. Uh, 1990 than it is now but man everyone took the money and gave up the front row seat for 100 bucks well i'm sure they got they their all, seat back yeah. after the gimmick let's see they were all uh, in on it i'm sure nah. D- dave loved the angle match sucked one and three quarter stars yes so uh for those of you who didn't watch the show dust uh dibiase and virgil paid off the entire front row to leave dustin rhodes refused their money tore up in fact which i believe is a felony uh for destroying money but the you said that uh, two years ago. Well, I'm still right. <laughs> so uh, Dustin was cheering too much. They just irritated them. They pulled him back down to his ass, and so he started fighting them, and they beat the holy hell out of him. And uh, Dusty's making his comeback as his car is going on a ringside, and Vince, who is so awesome at being being Vince McMahon on commentary, he's, he is not a, a sports play-by-play guy, but he's a great theatrical narrator. Turn around! They're beating your son! And uh, so Dusty finally goes to make the save, but Savage hits him with a top rope axe handle, wins by count out. And uh, I love the post match because both Roses are down on the ground, but DiBiase and Virgil are evil bastards. So they continue to double team the bloody kid. And they don't, they leave Dusty alone until finally he crawls across Dustin, and covers him with his own body. And they leave, and Dusty is left weeping on the ground. No, no. Not only that. He's he's covered his son's body with his body. I must keep him from taking punishment. I will drape my body over his. And what he's actually screaming is, My son! My son! I was dying. The melodrama here was a 10. I like this angle a lot. And man, what a shot that DiBiase gave him with that chair. He's bleeding all over. Right in his blonde hair. Liked it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.